the uh, part two of the sample prep, I want to focus on protein fractionation. Um, is, okay, still sample prep? No. After I've done so many protein profiling of mouse brain proteins, I don't need mass spec anymore. I can I can point out what are they. Uh, tubulin, actin, heat shock proteins, um, uh, some uh, heat shock proteins, small ones uh, like alpha crystalline and cofilin, and uh, uh, calcium binding proteins. Uh, this is uh, this is ion channels. I know all of them now because if you put the total protein on 2 d gel, you end up seeing the most abundant proteins there. Proteum is like an iceberg. It's it's a lot, and it's it's very complex. In a in a cell, you can have up to fifty thousand proteins, different proteins there. And if you look at the expression level, they can be as abundant as uh, a million copies there, or as little as one or two, a few copies there. So the the range is huge, and if you throw the total proteins onto 2D gel, you end up seeing probably only 10 to 20 percent of the proteins on 2D gel. And after a few runs, you're going to lose interest because what are you going to see? You're going to see cytoskeleton proteins, heat shock proteins, um, mitochondrial proteins, some some uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear proteins as well, structure proteins as well. Okay. And if you are interested in stress proteins, the heat shock proteins, this is still useful. Okay, but in many cases, people are interested in proteins in the, in the middle part, where kinase transcription factors uh, can tell you a lot more information about the signal transduction pathway and your mechanisms. So then we need to find a way to dig deep into this, and the approach is fractionation. So the fractionation has so many options. All right. Um, I hope you can see this. Of course, you always want to fractionate your proteins based on their characteristics. Okay. You can based on their location in the cell. Okay. If it's nuclear and ER, membrane, or you know, uh, it's a cytosolic uh, or um, uh, membranes. It can. There are ways out there literature so you can find those um, uh, methods and also companies provide different kits like in BioRed we provide ready prep, protein extraction, the cytosolic uh, and also nuclear proteins first and then you have membrane 1, membrane 2 and also signal proteins, uh, signal protein rich fractions so there are all different kits there. And you can also fractionate your uh, proteins based on the solubility, hydrophobicity, uh, sequential extraction, and also you know other other methods. Now, there are also size. You can based on protein size to extract this. I'm going to talk about here in sample in, in case study, uh, prep cell study, uh, separation of your of of your of your protein samples. You can also use, I mentioned this biospin columns, which is a size exclusion chromatography approach. Okay. And uh, PrEP cell is actually electrophoresis based separation of, of protein size. It can based on the charge of, of the proteins. And for acidic proteins, you can use ion exchange column. For basic proteins, you can use uh, cation exchange column. And you can based on the PI. PI, not only uh, this time we don't use gel based uh, IF, we use a liquid phase based IF um, uh, fractionation of your protein samples. And a big part missing from this chart is affinity based fractionation. Their immunoprecipitation approach is actually a good way to and reach just the proteins of your interest, right? Really directly interact with your target protein and put them in 2D gels to display. 
tag affinity pur purification. This is so if you have an uh, expression system, you know, uh, express your tagged proteins in your in your either E. coli or or mammalian cells, or whatever uh, cell cultures. You can use the tag antibody to pull down your target protein and together with the proteins intact with your proteins. Okay, it's a similar approach to uh, immunoprecipitation, just if you don't use antibodies. And I'm going to pick up uh, a few of these technologies here and give you a sample, sample study, okay, and to show uh, what's the advantage and uh, how to use them. And I got the, this slide is a solution chemistry where you increase the uh, um, the harshness of, of your lysis buffer to extract um, different proteins from your complex samples. Um, for example, here's a, here's a, a study extraction membrane proteins by different celebration separation uh, for for two D. So in this um, first, starting from your sample, in the first try, you use just TERS. Okay, so here you break the cells, you hopefully you get just hydrophilic proteins. Okay, and uh, take the supernatant and put on 2D gels, this is what you see. And in the second, from the pellets here, you add detergent, urea, chaps, and, and, and trees, and with, with with this much stronger, and you get the second extraction of of proteins from from the same sample. Okay, and you got a different groups of proteins out from from this pellet. And finally, you add um, thiourea into it, and you probably can get uh, an, another different set of proteins in there. Okay. So this this is one of the approach you can try if if it works for you. It just means, hmm? yes. What is percentage? percentage is referring to the protein uh, recovery. So about forty to eighty percent of the proteins actually got extracted from from this approach, and the extra twelve to forty it depends you know varies from, and finally after that you don't have much left, right? Okay, so this is the the uh, the, uh, the total gel total view of the gel from from the previous previous run. So this is uh, the first run, and the second and the third uh, extraction. So this is how you get different patterns, you know, different um, uh, uh, results in protein populations from this extraction. So, and also other, i just give you samples of uh, other uh, signal extraction, uh, signal protein extraction, membrane one protein extraction, membrane two. You know why this, this struggling with this, uh, with this um, uh, resolution here? Because we have to use very special detergent. And this detergent itself sometimes can interfere with your uh, IEF run. That's why we are struggling here. See this darkness here, you can see this quite often in your gel sometimes. It depends on what kind of detergent you use. You can see on the, uh, I believe it's a basic basic end down there, you can see the uh, darkness is stained and the, these are um, caused by detergents. And uh, this is the total protein one.